It is on. It is on. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, just, I just wanted to do yes, it. Yeah. Okay. Recording in progress. We must have heard you. <laughs> Wait, put the light. Oh. Do we, do we have a spare box? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm horrible Thank you, sir. Good evening, everybody. I would like to welcome everybody to the <clears throat> Board of Selectmen Town Meeting on Tuesday, June 6, 2023, at 6.01 p.m. If we could open the meeting with the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Let's play ball. All right. <coughs> so first on the agenda is board appointments, trustee of the trust funds, Nancy Kozlowski. Motion. So is, yep. um, is Nancy not able to be here? Okay. So just to kind of update the uh, the uh, millions of viewers, uh, uh, probably about two meetings ago, we have a. Uh, this is Joe's position, correct, Joe? Yes, uh, my position. I'm so one year position. So Joe resigned to uh, when he was voted into the Board of Selectmen. So this is us filling this vacancy, which would be filled until next March. And somebody would, uh, or many people would have the opportunity to get on the ballot, which does it end up being um, were you up anyway next year? I would have been up, yes. Okay, so it would be a three-year term yeah, if they run next time. So we had put it out there for anybody in town to put their name forward, and I believe this was the only name we got. However, that doesn't mean anything because she uh, seems to be a very passionate candidate and somebody who wants to be involved, and that sounds good to me. So. So if you want to... Well, with that all said and done, I will make a motion to appoint Nancy Kozlowski as the trustee of the trust fund with term to expire March 24th of March of 2024. And I will second that. All right. Seconded by Matt. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Welcome aboard, Nancy. Yep. Welcome aboard, Nancy, and thank you for your service that you're about to perform for the town. Uh, we'll open the meeting to citizens' input. If anybody would like to come up to the mic and has anything to discuss about tonight's agenda beforehand. <coughs> anybody on Zoom? All right, this is all going to be very dramatic, but pardon me. Don't need to be so dramatic. <laughs> Uh, Matt Burrell, Overlook Drive. Hopefully everybody knows me. <laughs> and I just want to, I hope I don't meander on. Bob, you'll shut me off if I go too far. But uh, So we just had the Memorial Day Parade, uh, what, a week ago? And I just wanted to say that I think it was a good parade, but and I may be preaching to the choir, 
I was a little disappointed once again with the parade. And the disappointment comes from the fact <clears throat> that I think this is the fifth year we had no band from the school. And I've talked to people at the school. I know Joe told me he had a recent conversation. The administration, the teachers are all disappointed that they can't commit to having a band at the parade. Uh, so we're disappointed. The people at Sanborn are disappointed. Uh, the veterans are disappointed. I don't know what the solution is. I've heard reasoning behind why we don't have a band for the parade. We used to always have a band. Mm -hmm. uh, and to be fair, we don't technically have a marching band at the high school, so it was a piece of the concert band. But, uh, and I'm not gonna, I'm not going to explain what I think the reasons are because I'm hearing them all second and third hand, but nobody seems to want to come up with a solution. And it hit me kind of hard because if you listen to Ken Weiler, Representative Weiler was a speaker, and he talked about when he was in Vietnam, flying coffins home in that, like the first, first trip there was one coffin and then all of a sudden they had the whole plane was filled with coffins. So what we're asked to do as citizens is just to remember them, when I say them, all, the, all those who gave their lives to the country with a honor ceremony, a parade and an honor ceremony on Memorial Day once a year. And you know, I'm making myself sound old, but I can remember when the parade was a different thing, you know? Uh, it's now a day off. It's a long weekend. Uh, people travel. I, I've traveled since I've held this position, well, that position. Um, and I upset my wife one Monday morning when I said we have to get up at six o'clock in the morning because we have to travel back to Newton because I have to go put a suit on because I have to participate where I've committed to for this honor ceremony in the parade. She wasn't happy about it, but she understood. Um, we don't get the participation on many levels in the parade, in the honor ceremony. The ones we do thank you so much, you know, I'm not talking to those people because they're there every year. It also hit me when I showed up at the cemetery after the parade was done, and you have those gentlemen who are in uniform, the veterans, are standing there. They're standing there every year. Um, every single year, nobody, nobody calls each of them and makes sure they can make it. They're just there. You can set your clock by it. I'm sure maybe they missed a few, they were sick or whatever, but they're there every year and they're standing at attention with their rifles. Probably thinking about people they knew that couldn't be there, that they served with. I just wish we could all do better. I don't know what the solution is. I'm open to solutions, but I'm just, I walked away from that uh, parade, you know, proud of what we did, but disappointed that we can't do more. And I wish we could do more and we have a whole year to do it. So, thank you. Thank you, Matt. Matt, Matt started it, so now it's my turn. <coughs> uh, I was actually gonna do this as part of the EOC report, so thank you for doing this now. Um, I, as a citizen and as a resident, do want to thank everybody that participated in this parade. And for everybody out there in TV land, please know everybody is welcome. If you're a veteran, whether you, you don't think you have to march, we have carriers and transport vehicles we can put you in, put your family in. We had Hummers, we could put lawn chairs in the back. Um, I have to say for every resident that sat out on their lawn, God bless them. I'll try not to get emotional and wave their little flag. 
It's because they lost somebody. Oh, dear. That's it. And it's so moving. So thank you, everyone. Sorry. It's hard to believe I was a cop. <laughs> okay. Seriously, anybody that wants to participate, motorcycles, classic cars, old cars, a cool car, family, if you could ride along and just do this rolling parade, we're not going to ask you to march, and know that you put a smile on somebody's face, call us, call the selectman, call my Pavero, call the selectman secretary. It is so worth it. It, it tugs at your heart. It's a wonderful thing. Sorry. Thanks, Trish. <coughs> well said. Nobody on Zoom? Guess that's it. Uh, all right. Um, opera updates, please. <laughs> it's the Kleenex. <laughs> now, ARPA should not bring you to tears. It should. It's if ARPA brings you to tears, we have something we to talk about. We got a problem. About, so. That's right. Yeah. So, and, and before I start, I, I actually have a question. Now that we have on the agenda a place where we're doing staff reports, typically in the past we did ARPA slash EOC. Would you, the selectmen, our TA, would you like me to do the EOC report with staff reports, or should I do it now with ARPA? Because I've we've done it together because it had to go together before. Now we've got a place where I can speak. So I think there'd be repetitive information. Like if if you had to say, I'll talk to you in ten minutes about the okay. Other, I might, yeah. So I for might today, I'll fishing. I'll roll it together today, kind of like the rolling parade. Okay. <laughs> So our op update, very little we have not met since your last Board of Selectmen meeting, but to give you an update, um, I have installed the filters in some of our town spots, um, town clerk's office, building department, the Board of Selectmen office, and both floors in the library. The rest of this week, um, you'll see we've got the boxes up here, Mate and Mark carried them up. Well, we have two large filters for the town hall here, and I still have one for uh, planning board for Jim and one for the bookkeeper. So I will get those done either Wednesday or Thursday. Um, so everything will be all installed as far as our filters go. Uh, another part of our op update, Jack Kozak, who you all know was out for a little while. God bless him. He was back home and s was stir crazy, so he made lots of calls to try to get everything going with the generator and the propane. <coughs> Come to find out our contact for the propane being filled in the tank had moved to another company, and that's why he wasn't getting calls back. So he did call me on Friday and Saturday, and he's working on that because I scolded him for working, but it was probably good. <laughs> um, also, ARPA, we, we will be having a meeting next week. A few people have come forward with some requests, so those of you that are on the ARPA committee, uh, I'll be putting out an agenda. It'll probably be next Wednesday at 1, if that works for Jim, but I'll call everyone tomorrow just to make sure. I think that's all the ARPA. So, EOC, a couple of things. Um, Currently, I want you to know that I'm involved. I'm almost done with getting a certificate for um, from NIM Social Media Management uh, Social Media Emergency Management Certificate. So hopefully that'll help um, help me in an emergency. I've also participated last week at, in a hazard mitigation Zoom meeting. Um, we have these every once in a while, and they reminded us that as of April of this year. The hazard mitigation plan had been updated by the state, and in order for us to receive grants, we have to keep this current. Now, those of you that were selectmen last year, you remember we just finished our plan last year. There is a copy of it, I believe. Well, Nancy used to have a copy. I have to confirm that there's a copy up here. I was going to electronically send it to the Board of Selectmen, to Jim, and to Robin, just so that you can see what we have to do on this hazard mitigation plan, everybody that takes a look at it, I have to keep, tr kind of <coughs> keep track of everybody's time when you're reviewing it. It's somewhat lengthy, 
But in order for us to receive grants, we have to have this plan in place. So ours is in place. It's been signed by the selectmen. However, as you review it, especially the new selectmen, um, your, we have to match, we do a match when we go for this grant. We do the grant every four years, we apply for the grant. And your looking at this is worth $25 an hour. We're not paying you, but that's the match. So I am gonna send it to the selectmen in case you haven't received it. Um, also, uh, at my legal meeting last week, FEMA is compiling a public damage assessment for the flooding conditions that we had in early May. So far, it doesn't look like Rockingham is going to meet that threshold, but I'm still submitting, um, <coughs> submitting information to them. Um, we had last week a Seabrook meeting with our Homeland Security rep, our Seabrook rep, a, ma a map, maker, I guess I'm going to call him, uh, Chief Jewett, Chief Alcadino, Mike Pavero, myself, my rep, the MAP rep, and uh, Homeland Security was there. We discussed our evacuation routes. We have some new maps. We desperately need signs, cones. We actually would be great if we had a trailer we could put all our equipment in. Uh, it would be nice to have radios that work. We also discussed the fact that we do have a siren at the old fire station. And at the moment, we're not even sure if it really works. So that's something that well, I'll have to coordinate with the selectmen and <coughs> the town administrator uh, because I don't want to set it off to test it and cause any more hard feelings that may be out there. Um, also, for TV land and everyone here, we still have an issue with cryobacteria at Country Pond. I have my sign out, my sign, the, the town sign um, is trying to advise everyone. They, we are advising no swimming, no wading, not even any pets uh, should be in the water. And I will keep the selectmen informed and the office informed. Uh, maybe we could put it on the town website. They were testing again today, so I don't have today's results yet. But as of right now, going into maybe hot weather, I hear another hot weekend day. It's important our residents know. Uh, we also, Seabrook had us, all the emergency management directors, do a survey about the siren. It seems in their infinite wisdom, somebody decided that maybe we should do away with the siren that we're all used to and have us get notified via the internet or the television. And we all responded almost unanimously. I think it was like 97% said, what do we do for places that don't have good internet? And what do we do for people that don't have a TV? And all of us have been brought up listening for that siren sound. So I think they really got shut down. It's not over yet. Um, but because we don't have reliable internet and we have part of the population that may not even have a TV, the sirens will probably stay. And is that my last thing? I think that's it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Okay. <coughs> Next, we have a proposal um, for JMPS, Protective Services <coughs> Contract Agreement. Actually, this is an update, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. <coughs> JM Protective Services provides the town of a, a, a maintenance and service plan for the fire alarm system here at the town hall. At your last meeting, um, Seligman Guide wanted to know why there were different systems in different buildings in town. This one is not set to expire until December 5th, 2024. And at that time, we can work on a unified system with a single vendor. All right, very good. Excuse me. I should probably correct something that I just said. I did not get notified that the cryobacteria level is acceptable. And from what I understand, uh, the Board of Selectmen office got notified. I somehow did not. So if people in TV land, disregard, and I'll fix my sign. Is that what she said? Yeah, yeah, I thought you were notified. No, okay. I, th I think it was a very recent test too right it was it supposed was, to be yesterday or today yeah, yeah. yes because so, i so it's not like it's just so yeah. people in tv land understand it's not like right. the words been i'll there. take it i'll fix it when i get out of here today but yeah when i spoke to her yesterday afternoon she it was still high levels yeah. so yeah. oh okay so Perfect. there you go so, 
perfect. I don't feel so bad. Exactly. You, <laughs> sh you shouldn't. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> if there's if yeah. there's somebody going, man, I could have been at the lake an hour and a half ago. Yes. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Chairman, may I make a comment on the uh, the J uh, having to do with the JMPS contract and any future contracts? Yeah. That uh, moving forward, I'd like to see that these contracts get reviewed and not automatically be renewed. Yeah, I believe we talked about that at the um, the last meeting, because what we're going to try to do is instead of having three, what is it, three separate meetings? Um, three, mm -hmm. not meetings, three separate, three three separate services. Mm -hmm. We're going to combine one. all. Exactly all the services so that it becomes under one so that everything will be yeah. coordinated. But that not only has to do with this, but just any, any future contracts that might be coming up for renewal. Well, yeah, we talked about that, that somehow somewhere in some parts of the system that that was automatically done, but we're, we're looking to change that right. so that they don't just get automatically. Yeah, and I, for that purpose. Change. I, don't, I don't think anything gets automatically uh, renewed. Mm -hmm. I think that sometimes it, it seemingly gets automatically right. renewed. I think the key thing is uh, to kind of jump off of what Joe is saying is there needs to be clarity that what we're doing is a contract, right? So, yes. so if it comes up on our agenda, it's it's. I mean, I've been here a while. Sometimes we got things put in front of us, and somebody's making a motion, and boom, we just signed yeah. up for a contract. Like, we want to have clarity about what we're actually voting on, yep. you know? So. Yep. Excellent. Thank you. Very good. Um, Jim, would you like to address uh, the board about tax map 14-1-24-4, please? Mr. Chairman, I bring you the concerns of the planning board. These are as part of my position as the administrative assistant. They asked me to bring this to the selectman's attention for code enforcement. Um, there are 19 deficiencies on that property, and I'll go through them one by one, and then I'll go through some plans that you have copies of. First of all, there is no guardrail along the perimeter of the site near the steep slope as shown on the approved site plan. Boulders were placed instead and do not appear adequate to stop an out of control vehicle. All of these comments, by the way, are, are directly extracted from either the town, engin town engineer's responses to visitations <coughs> or from the circuit rider. Uh, upon D and G, these are stormwater management detention areas, both appear different than the approved plans. Um, the parking lot on the north end was constructed and it extends approximately 75 feet beyond the building. No parking lot or driveway, or driveway was shown on the approved plan except the ex emergency access route. Upon det stormwater detention ponds, J and I at the north end of the building were never constructed. There does not appear to be any handicapped parking act spaces, striping or signs, or suitable handicapped access to the buildings. When the planning board asked the applicant regarding this, the board was informed that there would never be handicapped people working in these buildings, and why did they need to have handicapped access? There are trailers located on the north end of the parking lot, uh, located on the south end of the building, which appears to be blocking the fire access roadway. The fire access road in the back of the building does not appear passable. The parking lot lighting has only been partially completed. It was not, what has been done was not done with the actual light fixtures that were shown in the approved plan and there are complaints from neighbors about these lights shining through their windows. Uh, the landscaping plan has not been implemented. There's a 25 foot seven inch gap between building 9A and 9B on Puzzle Lane, which is not supposed to be there. There's a 20 by 20 foot loading dock that has been added in that space. Various garage doors on units 
9A, 9B, and 9C have been added without planning board approval. Um, concrete block retaining walls on all three <coughs> units in building nine that were never brought before the planning board. There are two transformers in the septic system area south of 9A. There's a retaining wall on the east side of unit 9A. There are various electric bullets requested by UNITIL that have not been put in. There is stormwater runoff from the fire lane along the back of the building uh, that was designed to flow northerly towards proposed Pond J. The pond is not directed northerly and is released in a break in the berm at about the middle of the building, which causes erosion to an abutting piece of property. Also, Pond J and K have not been constructed, um, which is where this water is supposed to be um, channeled to for retention and <coughs> disbursement into the soil. Uh, existing grades appear different than what was shown on the approved plan in this area, which would make construction of the ponds as designed difficult. There is a hole next to the forebay of Pond G. Once again, all the ponds are part of the stormwater management system that results in a steep slope along the edge of the pavement and serves no function. The hole should be filled and graded and sloped to match the approved plans. The riprap in stormwater outlet pipe on the stormwater management pond G4 bay has been washed away by high flow. Larger stone is required. There is an additional pipe and catch basin discharging to the location, but since it drains the same area of the parking lot as originally proposed, they take no exception to this change. There are no continual sidewalks along the front and south sides of the building. Door layouts and retaining walls for loading docks were added, including additional doors on the northwest end of the building where no pavement is shown. And transformer paths with bollards are located within the paved area. Now, if you want to move to the lodge sheets that I gave you, the first one, um, <coughs> and people may ask how well I know this property. If you look at the signature block down at the bottom, you might recognize who signed these. As you can see, this is the approved plan from 2015. There are missing trees in four different locations. Um, these are meant to either increase or replace the non-existing um, undisturbed buffer. You can see that there are four stormwater management areas that the ponds were never built. You can see the, the distance where the guardrail is missing. You can see the sidewalks that are missing. And you can see that smack dab in the middle of the plan where it says everything is missing, <laughs> they have done nothing. That parking lot is basically a sea of pavement that is basically a free-for-all. It is supposed to have um, traffic control islands on it or berms. It is supposed to have 10 trees planted at the edges of these uh, berms or um, traffic control areas. None of it has been done. None of the sidewalks along the building have been put in and the parking lot along the southeastern side of the building is also missing. If you move to the next page, but please keep that one in mind. Don't put it away because when you start to look at things, you'll see that the next page are things that were added that are not on the original plan much of which has caused problems with the original plan. 
if you see at the very top of the page the stormwater management area that is not to plan. If you look at the two, you can <coughs> see that originally it was supposed to be two ponds with, a, with an overflow gate between them. It has now become four ponds and we're not, nobody is certain why. Um, you can see all of the missing trees. You can see that in the middle of what is now an unlined parking lot where they have added um, two electronic, electric transformers and a concrete pad for a dumpster. It's not on the original plan. If you go down to the structures themselves, you can see the big gap that is missing in the middle where they where they have added a um, loading dock. You can see a retaining wall that was added sticking out on the left-hand side of the building. <coughs> that is in the middle of what is supposed to be 20 parking spaces. As you go across that building, you have the gap in the building, and you have areas where they've added, at their discretion, a number of garage doors and loading docks that differ from the original plan. If you go to the far left, uh, sorry, far right side of the building, you'll see two additional concrete retention walls that were built up without any, any planning board approval. And you'll see that they've put in some things like a concrete pad. Um, there's an additional dumpster pad that's actually in the middle of the emergency access road on the far right-hand side. They added a large parking lot there on the right-hand side that was never approved. They have a <coughs> leach field in what was supposed to be a stormwater management area. You can also see that they added several um, propane tanks. These are buried 1,000-gallon tanks that are in the ground and can only be accessed by maintaining that as a level. That property is supposed on that side was supposed to slope down into a stormwater retention pond that is not there. Going to the to the bottom side, you can see where they added a row of conifer trees, which they put on a berm, that as they grow will be blocking the emergency access around the back of the building. They have not put in the uh, required unobstructed emergency access completely because that's going to obstruct it. As you go along to the left, you'll see a massive concrete block retention wall, which we have no idea why it was built, how it was built. However, the applicant said that they had none of the engineering on it. At the far side there, you get into the uh, two more underground propane tanks, which, by the way, what they show as a circle, that is simply the head of, which is where they're filled. We know nothing about what, what direction they go in. how they were done. And there's an addition of a um, of another concrete structure, which is the a dumpster pad that is not on the original, that was not on the original plan. Right above that last dumpster, and it's not marked on, you'll see a row of six, six conifer trees that's kind of going up towards the top of the sheet. Those are actually in what is supposed to be a parking lot. There are regulations requiring the number of parking spaces per, 
per square footage of your building because of possible anticipated occupancy. They have, they have none. I'm not allowed on the property, so I can't verify how they actually do parking. But what should have been a very green space with a lot of trees planted in amongst the sea of, of pavement, there is nothing. The planning board has, the second plan is part of a proposal that was brought before the planning board in September. It was recently withdrawn. Um, the planning board regretfully has no teeth by statute <coughs> and therefore they are asking the, the Board of Selectmen through code enforcement to please enforce this. We have quite a few of the abutters that have complained that you know they come to planning board meetings, they argue that things are not being done right. You know, the, the person who the stormwater is flowing onto his property, needless to say, is not happy. Uh, the people on the other side who the lights from the, because they did not put in the, the, the approved lighting for the parking lot, it literally shines in all of her, her windows on one side of her house. Um, we have, you know, missing trees that are preventing people from being screened from some of this. And I'm here to answer any factual questions I talk about. Thank you, Jim. So, <clears throat> To just kind of a small um, snippet of what Jim was saying, the whole reason why he's here is because of what he was just talking about is that there are a lot of codes that have been broken. Um, so there are some impending dangers that are on this property. Um, whenever somebody comes to the planning board and proposes to do a, um, make a site and put up buildings. Um, the town comes, puts their input in. Uh, there are conditions that are put on the plans so that the abutters to these properties are not um, impacted by noise, um, after hours, by no lights. Um, the erosion, like Jim was talking about, because the water is not being um, directed and handled properly with those ponds. Um, and right now the planning board's hands are tied where they have no jurisdiction on this, so Jim has come before us on the behalf of the planning board so that we can get code enforcement to look into this matter and get these um, problems taken care of so that the abutters can have peace of mind and enjoy their property the way that they should be able to enjoy their property. So <clears throat> that is the gist of why Jim's here and what's been going on with this property. And I know Roger Hamill sitting down if Roger would wants to come up real quick if you'd like to put in your I'll be here if you have yep. any questions. I would like to speak to the fact that all the concerns have been ongoing and this issue has been brought to four different building inspectors over the years. So it's not like these are just things that we know now. These are things that Mr. Lemire, Mr. Wolf, I don't, Jim, I un understood. Your statement's yeah. understood. <clears throat> Okay. Roger Hamill, I live in Sergeant Woods. Jimmy actually gave a whole long, much longer list than I was going to give because I, 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 I've got concerns of some of those things. But basically, but my, my real point is that when in, on May 9th, when the developer withdrew his plan, he now has no mechanism in which 
to get an approval to rectify all the problems that are well documented as being there. And I think the only way to uh, address that is foreign enforcement action that would then require him to go back to the planning board. And you know, the only people who can do that <coughs> are you. So I would ask that you, you know, start, start a, an enforcement action so, so that we can start at least to get some of these problems addressed. Thank you. Thank you. And for those of you out there who don't know, uh, Mr. Hamill sits on our zoning board of appeals. So, uh, uh, for me, the next step is just, it's pretty straightforward. This is processes we have in place. So, if we need it, I'll make a motion to uh, direct the code enforcement officer to exercise his power to uh, ensure that this site is in proper compliance. I second that. Seconded by Joe. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And that's unanimous. So thank you for every, everything. Yes, thank you guys. Uh, do, 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 do. Unfortunately, Mr. Prevero was going to give us his uh, report. Uh, he was called away to business, so another very important business. So he will meet with us next meeting. Um, and now we will move on to the accept and expend the health trust wellness check that we received. To check that the town receives um, every year according to the letter. <coughs> I'm unable to find out what the money was used up in the past. We'll take advantage of the collective wisdom of the department heads when we meet uh, next week and try and get a handle on how the money was previously spent. So with that said, uh, move to make a motion to move to accept and expend the amount of $500 from the health trust to create staff wellness programs and encourage healthy habits for on-site. I'll second that. Seconded by Matt. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I don't think we should use it for a pizza party. No. That would no. probably not be a healthy no. use. Misuse, misuse of funds, you think? And especially because pizza ain't all that healthy. <laughs> All right, uh, air cleaning specialist, Newton Fire. Air cleaning specialist is a, a vendor that the fire department uses for preventative maintenance agreement for the poly movement source capture emergency exhaust fume removal system. <laughs> That's a mouthful. Mm -hmm. Basically, it just takes all the carbon dioxide out of, the, out of the garage. Um, this is an annual contract in the amount of $1,056. So I'd ask you to approve and authorize me to sign on behalf of the board. So I would like to make a motion to approve the contract renewal with cleaning specialists of New England in the amount of $1,056 for a preventive maintenance agreement for the Holly Movement Source Capture Emergency Exhaust Fume Removal System to expire on May 31st, 2024, and to allow the town administrator to sign the contract on behalf of the board. I'm glad Joe did that one. <laughs> <laughs> I will second it, though. Seconded by Matt. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Next is land use change on tax 16-4-1-1 and 16-4-1-1A. Jim, would you like to fill us in on that, please? From the public. I believe it was just uh, the oversight. <coughs> These are requests from um, the collector of taxes for Newton, Mary Jo McCulloch. Uh, the first property is map 16, lot 4, 001 1. And uh, ta tax use, I call it a penalty, um, is $17,000. Um, the second property is, oh, but that was uh, 1.9 acres coming out of current use. And the next property is map 16, lot 4, 001-1A, 
1.77 acres in the amount of $17,500. Those would be two separate motions by the board. All right, I move to approve the tax collector's land use change tax warrant for map 16-4-1-1 in the amount of $17,000 and zero cents. Second. Seconded by Joe. All in, any discussions? I didn't think there would be. Mm -hmm. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I would also move to approve the tax collector's land use change tax warrant for tax map 16-4-1-1A in the amount of $17,500 and zero cents. Second. Seconded by Joe. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And next we're gonna move to requisition 1062 FD uniforms. <coughs> so Rex from the fire department. It's for uh, four pieces of uh, equipment, coats and pants, two coats, two pants. Um, the vendor is Firematic Supply Company out of Shirley, New York. The total for the invoice is $7,210 even. So I'd like to make a motion to move to sign the requisition 1062 FD for the fire uniform provided by Firematic Incorporated in the amount of $7,210, funds to come from the Fire Department Protective Clothing Account number 4220309. I'll second for discussion. So that's the actual account number? Is that what that is? Or is that a line item, a budget? It's a GL, yeah, so which is the line item. Yeah. So it's the line item, okay. Yeah. So, so just, uh, nitpicking here but you said account joe so it's okay so it's actually from the fire department approved my, my budget line item you know what i mean but otherwise all good you all set Almost with set. that yeah. change yeah with that being said and seconded by matt all in favor aye, aye. and we will move on to manifest please <clears throat> Move to sign vendor manifest dated June 6, 2023 in the amount of $65,185.99. Second. Seconded by Matt. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Move to sign cable revolving fund vendor manifest dated June 6, 2023 in the amount of $17,204.03. Second. Seconded by Matt. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Move to sign payroll manifest for the period May 21st through June 3rd, 2023, with a pay date of June 8th, 2023. Total payroll is $72,738.59, which includes $139.52 in OPER administrative costs. Second. Seconded by Matt. All in favor? Aye. 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 I'll do the minutes if you want. Okay. Uh, I move to accept the public meeting minutes amended, or I'm sorry, public meeting amended minutes dated May 2nd, 2023 as amended. Second. Seconded by Joe. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I would also move to accept the public meeting minutes dated May 16th, 2023 as written. Second. Seconded by Joe. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I would also move to accept the non-public meeting minutes dated May 30th, 2023 as written. Second. Seconded by Joe. All in favor? Aye. Uh, action items, new and old business. <coughs> Anybody got anything they want to put out there? Mr. Chairman, I would just like to point out if I may for the board's um, information, at the May 2nd meeting, uh, selectman guide move to approve the uh, tax collectors land use change tax warrant for map and lot 1-1-2 that number is not correct so that's why i would like to amend the minutes to include the one you actually signed which is lot 05 001-001-2 that's the parcel that was on the warrant so it's a kind of fyi and Robin will amend the ministry to reflect that. Okay. Thank, you. Thank you, Jim. 
and uh, selectmen goals and objectives. Um, seeing as we're missing two selectmen. Yeah, but, but I will say, I think, if I'm remembering correctly last time, we wanted to have kind of the definitive list to send around. So do we have, do we have the, uh, and this is a stretch because I think it's going back three meetings, but we had the list we started to create in that meeting. And then I think Dan was the one, he said, he said he wanted to see the whole list so we could kind of in the meeting together, we could kind of check off what we want to keep, what we want to take away. Yeah. So I think what we should commit to is having that list for our next meeting when we have five people here. Yep. So what I think we need to do is we need to, if Robin could send around uh, via email what we had that last time, because I think it was only like three or four things. Right. Uh, and then via email, we could all add to it mm -hmm. and then, you know, show up in the next meeting. We might have a dozen things, but in that meeting, we can. So I did create a file on, the, um, on SharePoint. Cool. Okay. So Joe's objectives are under there and then a previous um, goals. So if you just send us that link uh, after the meeting, that'll be our homework, right? To add yep. to that list as necessary and then when we have five people here, we can discuss it intelligently and, and cross things off or whatever. Good. Cool. Uh, we have somebody approaching the microphone. Uh oh. <coughs> Just a question. We used and to have a guy who did that. I all know. The time. I'm trying. Okay, I'm him. <laughs> Just call me Joe. Um, and maybe it's already posted, so I apologize if it's already on our website. But the July meeting, the first Tuesday of the month, is the 4th of July. You gonna be here? Uh, no. <laughs> so is it the following week? Is that gonna be our first selectman meeting? What did we end up deciding? We haven't decided that yet, right? Yeah, well, I, I can tell you that in years past, mm -hmm. we've do, done one meeting in July. We did. Um, so yeah, because it won't be the following Tuesday because the planning board will be meeting. Be here. So I just wanted to bring that up. Okay. Yep. Thanks. So Yeah, I think and, we, I put a bug in your ear. Yeah. Week. Yeah. So you're looking at you're looking at July 18th, right? Um, so if we met on July 18th, if there was any urgent business between, what would it be? June? What's the next one? June 20th? Yeah. June 20th and July 18th, we could always kind of get everybody in here, but right. maybe we just try to plan, try to plan <coughs> to only need one meeting in July go with that. We'll roll with it and see see what happens. I think the schedule also has one occurring Thanksgiving week. The Tuesday before the Thursday Thanksgiving. You might want yeah. to think of moving that at some point. So why don't I send you out your uh, current schedule and then you can look at that and give me an idea of if you'd like to drop it completely or just move it to a different day. All right. A good question, Trish. Thank you. Anything else? And I don't believe we have any non-public. <coughs> nope. So we are all set with that. So at 6.53, I will adjourn the meeting. That's a new way.